Derivation of equations of motion. I will explain each and every step of derivation which many people are missing. If you want to master differentiation and integration, watch our lectures and their links are given in the description. First of all, let me teach you one of my favorite questions. Why we derivate to physical quantities in physics? Or why we need to study differentiation in physics? Well, there are two reasons. Firstly, to check that how fast one physical quantity changes with respect to another. For example, consider displacement and time. We derivate displacement with respect to time in order to check that how fast displacement changes with the time. For instance, we say that 1000 meter per second. From this value, we know that displacement changes 1000 meter every second or per second. Secondly, we need to study differentiation to obtain a new derived physical quantity. For example, we write ds upon dt. When we derivate displacement upon time, we get a new derived physical quantity which we call velocity. Thus remember that we need to study differentiation in order to check that how fast one physical quantity changes with respect to another and we obtain a new derived physical quantity after derivation. Now you must remember these five variables used in all three equations. I teach this super easy trick. I say uv set. Here u stands for initial velocity, v stands for final velocity, s stands for displacement, a stands for acceleration, and t stands for time. Hence note down these five important variables. Now we will derive the first equation of motion. We know that first equation of motion is v is equal to u plus a t. So our final goal is to derive this equation v is equal to u plus a t. I will derive this equation in two simple steps. In the first step, we will understand acceleration. We know that acceleration is equal to change in velocity upon change in time. Now mathematically, we write it as a equals dv upon dt. We already learned that this equation is in derivative form. It means that how much velocity changes in a small time, while this a is the result of derivation. Remember this very very important point. a is constant, only velocity and time change. Let me repeat it. a acceleration is constant, only velocity and time change. Let this is equation number 1. We know that our final goal is to get this equation. Hence, I rearrange this equation. I write a equals dv upon dt. According to math rules, when we shift any variable from right hand side to left hand side, their operators change. This dt is divided here. I shift it from the right hand side to the left hand side and I multiply it with acceleration a. I get a into dt equals dv. Now listen carefully. This equation is in derivative form. We need to remove the derivative d symbol from both sides. We already learned in our previous lecture of integration that Integration is the reverse process of derivatives or integration is antiderivative. For example, if there is derivative on both sides of equation, we can easily cancel them by putting integration on both sides. Because this integral and derivative and this integral and derivative cancel out each other. Thus remember that to remove the derivative d symbols from both sides, we take integral on both sides. In the second step, 
we take integral on both side. I write integral dt equals integral dv. We know that a is constant. According to integration rule, we write constant out of integral. I write a integral dv equals integral dt. Now we apply limits to integral. Remember that we apply limits to integral because velocity and time change from initial value to final value and acceleration a is produced. Here the initial velocity is equal to u and final velocity is equal to v while initial time is 0 and final time is t. According to the rule of integration, I put the initial velocity u at the bottom and final velocity v at the top of integral. While I put t is equal to 0 at the bottom and t is equal to t at the top. We already learned that integration is antiderivative. Hence this integral and d and this integral and d cancel out. I get a, I write square bracket, 0 and t equals to v square bracket u and v. According to the rule of integration, we write final limit minus lower limit. So I write a t minus 0 equals v minus u. I get a t is equal to v minus u. After rearranging, I get v is equal to u plus a t. Hence, this is the required first equation. Thus, note it down this simple derivation of first equation of motion. Now, we will derive second equation of motion. The second equation of motion is s is equal to ut plus half a t squared. To derive second equation of motion, we understand the concept of velocity in first step. We know that velocity is equal to change in displacement upon time. Mathematically, we write v equals ds upon dt. Here, our final goal is displacement equal to. So, I shift dt from the right hand side to the left hand side. I get v into dt equals ds. We already learned in the previous slide that we need to cancel these derivative d symbols on both sides. To do so, we take integration on both sides in the second step. I write integral v dt equals integral ds. Here we select this v and we eliminate it from the equation. I mean we put the value of v from first equation of motion which is v equals u plus a t. Hence I write integral u plus a t into d t equals to integral d s. Now we apply limits to the integration. We know that displacement change with respect to time. So I need initial and final values of displacement and time. Let the initial value of displacement is 0 and its final value is s while the initial value of time is 0 and its final value is t. Remember that this positive sign separate these two terms u and a t. I will integrate these two terms separately. I write integral u dt plus integral a t dt equals to integral d s. We can see that this u and a both are constants. I write them out of integral. Now listen carefully. I take this term and I write it here to teach you its integration. We learned in our integration class that we write constant as it is. Secondly, we integrate this t with respect to dt. I write this t, I add plus 1 to its power. And I shift this 1 plus 1 power to the d numerator. I write square bracket and I write lower and upper limits. As a result, I get a into t squared upon 2 
0 and t. Now this integral and d cancel out. I get u and 2 t0 and t plus the value of a integral dt is a t squared upon 2 0 2 equals to this integral and s cancel out. I get s 0 and s. According to the rule of integration, I write final limit minus initial limit. I write u n to t minus 0 plus a n to t squared upon 2 minus 0 squared upon 2 equals s minus 0. I get u t plus a t squared upon 2 equals s. After rearranging, I get s is equal to u t plus half a t squared. Thus, this is the derivation of second equation of motion. Now, we will learn the derivation of third equation of motion. The third equation of motion is v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. So, our final goal is to derive this equation. In the first step, we will understand the concept of acceleration. We know that acceleration is equal to change in velocity upon change in time. Mathematically, we write a equals dv upon dt. Now listen carefully. We can see that there is no variable of time present in the third equation of motion. So we need to eliminate this t variable from the acceleration. Now there are different methods like chain rule of differentiation, but you will only need to remember this easy method. We say that multiplying and dividing by d is. Secondly, I shift the d numerators. I get a equals dv upon ds and to ds upon dt. We already learned that ds upon dt is velocity. I get a equals dv upon ds and to v. I shift ds from the right hand side to the left hand side. Thus I get a into ds equals v into dv. We can see that we have successfully eliminated the variables of time. Now to eliminate this derivative d symbol, we take integration on both sides in the second step. I write integral a ds equals integral v into dv. Here this a is a constant. I write a integral ds equals integral v into dv. Now we apply limits. Here in this equation, displacement change from 0 to s while velocity change from u to v. I take this right hand side and I write it here. The integration of this term is v i add 1 plus 1 to its power upon I shift 1 plus 1 power to the denumerator. I put square bracket and I put limits. Now in case of left hand side, I write a into s, I put limits. Equals to v squared upon 2, I put limits. We know that to open these two terms, we subtract lower limit from the upper limit. I write a into s minus 0 equals to v squared upon 2 minus u squared upon 2. I get a s equals to v squared minus u squared upon 2. I shift this 2 from the right hand side to the left hand side. After rearranging, I get v squared is equal to u squared plus 2 a s. Thus, this is the required third equation of motion. Therefore, using this simple method, we can easily derive equations of motion.